Welcome to Inside Northern. I'm Dr. Tim Downs, President of Northern State University, and I'm pleased to be welcoming people from our School of Education. So with me today, we have the Dean, Dr. Kelly Duncan. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, one of our graduate students, uh, Mac Arvidson. Welcome to, yeah. welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Oh, you're quite welcome. And Yana Nadu. I got your name correct? Yana, yep, yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> well, it's, uh, it, it's a very distinctive name, very nice name. Yeah. Thank you. But we're here to talk about the, the School of Education in general, and then we'll talk about a couple of specific programs today. Okay. Uh, one of them is counseling, and the other one's sports and leadership. Right. So we want to just kind of showcase the whole School of Education. Mm -hmm. Now, when you look at Northern State University, the, the university has had several names over the years, but it started as a teacher's college. That's correct. So Northern is probably most known as a teacher's college in South Dakota and uh, one of the things that we've always been able to say is probably the largest percentage of teachers in South Dakota are graduates of Northern State University's teacher ed program. So that's kind of a feather in our hat. Um, so in addition to teacher ed at the undergraduate level we also have uh, HPE, Human Performance and Fitness, uh, PE, Health, those types of majors, and then we also have a psychology undergraduate degree. So those are our undergraduate programs in the School of Ed. Okay. And, and let's not forget, what is the full name of the School of Education? It is the Millicent Atkins School of Education. Right. And that's in honor of? Of Millicent Atkins, who was a wonderful benefactor, gave a very large gift to the School of Ed, and so we have been able to do some really wonderful things with our elementary and special education students as a result of that gift. Yeah, it's a it's a pretty neat gift, and there's yeah. a bronze statue outside yes. of Gerber uh -huh. Hall that uh, really memorializes her, mm -hmm. who she was as a person. She had been a teacher, but then she went back into her roots and went back right. into farming, mm -hmm. and became quite successful. Yes, in what you might call a person that was active in the farming industry. She was. She, she bought and sold a lot of land over the years. And, and, and we were the, the benefactor of, mm -hmm. of her hard work. Mm -hmm. But it was really a, a sense of saying, this is a great enterprise, Northern, mm -hmm. and our School of Education, and knowing how much we would use it to leverage in the future to, for the future generations of, uh -huh. of teachers and people that are involved in things like human performance and other areas mm -hmm. such as psychology. Right. Yeah, it's, so it's, it's a pretty big deal. The total amount was? About $13 million. That's a big number. It's a big number. It's a very big number. So for $13 yeah. million, dollars, we do statues mm -hmm. of people. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. It was so. one of the largest philanthropic gifts in South Dakota history, actually. Yes. So yes. It's, it's, yes. it's just an amazing, mm -hmm. uh, really an opportunity for Northern to help us advance our programs because mm -hmm. it's all about using those resources to help students mm -hmm. and to help those students get through their education and have a great experience. Mm -hmm. So really a neat thing. It's another piece of Northern's history now. It that is. we can all be proud of. We have a really great bulletin board in our building that's got some some information about her and so sometime when you're walking by I'd encourage you to look at it because it's kind of fun to see a, a picture of her, of her with her very first class and some things like that. Yeah, yeah. pretty neat. Yeah. Yeah, did you guys know that? The whole Milson Atkins story? Not. Did not. Uh -huh. I actually read the, the Blackboard as I was uh -huh. touring campus this yeah. summer when I was new. Uh-huh. I'm still kind of new, uh -huh. but uh, I was just trying to walk around campus and take things in, and it's it's a great story. Yeah, uh, it's very very impactful. Mm -hmm. So, the School of Education started out as a normal school, mm -hmm. and providing people with those teaching credentials, it's expanded now. So now we have the undergraduate programs, which mm -hmm. you mentioned, and then the graduate programs as well. And today right. we're going to talk a lot about the graduate programs, two in particular. Right. So we have several graduate programs in our building. Um, the, the two students that we have with us right now are both in the sports performance and leadership program. So that's one of our areas. We also have a graduate counseling program. We'll be featuring a couple of students from that program a little bit later in the show. And then within the teacher ed realm, we have a number of different master's programs. We have teaching and learning, ed administration, um, educational studies, in, instructional design, and uh, so those will be the four in the teacher ed area, all okay. at the graduate level. Okay. And, and we're always looking for opportunities to either expand mm -hmm. the scope of a graduate program or undergraduate program. Mm -hmm. Potentially you can add an emphasis with a few courses, or sure. you could at the undergraduate level have a minor, at the graduate level graduate certificate, mm -hmm. which is always good in the educational areas, right. having some certification. 
or you can have a whole new graduate program. So mm -hmm. it's a question that we always ask each other and you work with your faculty on. Right. What do we need to do to help students and teachers and counselors advance their careers? What, mm -hmm. what knowledge do they need and how do we package that, those, those uh, sets of knowledge so you can advance your career and have an even better career than you already thought you were going to have? Yeah. So it's an ongoing process. Right. Absolutely. <coughs> So today we want to talk to a couple of our students right. and ask you, you know, a couple questions. And uh, the big one that we can ask you is, what drew you to Northern? I'm not sure you guys who would like to go first. Yana, you too. Uh, right. Oh, um, you go first. Um, well, um, I've wanted to get my I wanted to get my master's since um, I started college. That was kind of the plan, and um, I had one of my best friends was actually down here in the same program. Um, and so he kind of convinced me to come down and um, pursue that that dream that I had and kind of just dove in and said let's, let's do it and here I am. So so tell us about your program you know which uh, confirm the program and then and and how it's it's making sense for you what are you learning? Um, the sports performance and leadership yeah. program um, learning a lot actually towards um, my career goals um, there's uh, a lot of applied stuff that we get to do, a lot of hands-on stuff, and um, I think that's going to help later on in, in uh, my career. So do you, do you work in the fitness lab? I do, yep. Okay, yep. So, so if I show up in your lab uh, <laughs> because I, I, I need to be more fit or I, I want to work on some, I hurt myself playing softball or whatever, you know, what would I experience if I went to your lab? Um, what we do actually, um, what I do in there is um, we do a lot of um, assessments. So right now we just got a, a new um, piece of equipment in it. It's called the InBody. Um, you can do body fat testing and, and see how well you're hydrated. And so that's good for athletes to, uh, especially, you know, the track athletes, wrestling athletes, and see, give them a benchmark and where they need to be, where they need to get. And... Um, We've got a, a VO2, um, a VO2 piece of equipment in there. We can do cardiovascular testing, and um, okay. we're hopefully getting some more equipment in there to um, further our testing abilities and assessment abilities for the community. And okay. So um, if I wanted to increase my cardio, you could give me a baseline, and then give me a program to a workout program that to then increase my 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 cardio that so I could actually. Run five miles potentially. Es essentially, yeah. maybe more the the strength area, but yeah. Okay. I mean, we can test you and see where you're at, and yeah. you know, baseline for yeah. where you're at. Or see see how I, how much I can bench press in six months ever with your workout program. <laughs> Looks like it's a lot. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I bought a great T-shirt the other day, and it's it's it says on the front, "Old guys rule." In the bottom, it says, "The older I get, the better I was." <laughs> yeah. So you know, I think that's that's a condition of the male. Um, is you just you know you were great when you're younger, uh, but uh, I have to know my limitations. I can't hurt myself in the gym. Um, but that sounds like a really. So what do you think you'll, you'll do with this? You you have this knowledge and you work in the lab. What what's your plan once you get your your master's degree? Um, I'd like to open up my own um, performance enhancement center where athletes can come in, train train athletes. Um, with the newer technology that we have and the stuff that I've uh, been through in my undergrad and um, done some internships where I've learned a lot and I like to open that up to athletes to come and you know improve themselves for their sport and even just the average Joe that wants to come in and right. improve themselves. Um, I'd love to own one of those and um, support the community in that way. And That's help great. Help out the community. But first step, you'll probably go work for somebody else that has a Yeah, a lab like unfortunately, that. that's how yeah. it works out. <laughs> it's a good way to learn. Yeah, that. definitely. You can learn from other people's successes and yeah. areas of uh, need for growth and strength. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Always always learning. Good. So it's been a great experience so far. Yes, yes. I love my, right. love my time here. Well, we're, the, you know, our, our communities and our, our world is so focused on wellness. Mm -hmm. It seems like a good career niche. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. And we try to be... Uh, Focusing on wellness and not uh, eating too many fried foods, et cetera. Yeah. yeah. All of the fried food is great. <laughs> Gotta love it. Well, if you don't mind, why don't we switch gears? <coughs> Mac, um, just looking at you and how you've developed. You came here as an undergraduate. I did, yeah. yeah. And you came here, like your shirt says, to play mm -hmm. basketball. Mm -hmm. You have That's a great right. outside shot. 
I appreciate uh, that. <laughs> um, we had 37 points the other night. That was kind of a good night. Yeah, we were all there cheering you on. Yeah. Um, but so tell us about, you know, what drew you to Northern and, and then how you've kind of gone through this journey to find a, you know, a, a degree program. And then uh, tell us where you are and what your plans are. Um, yeah, well, like you said, I got here. I was fortunate enough to get uh, recruited to come here for athletics. Um, but beside that, I had heard like how great the tradition was here and how um, awesome the community was. So that was just a plus for me uh, once I committed here. Then I kind of have had an unusual route. I came in with some college credits out of high school. Okay. So then coming in, I'm thinking, well, I can maybe knock out my degree in about four years. Uh, second year here, I have a season ending injury. So then now I'm looking at five years here. So then I'm thinking, well, I can do about 12 credits a semester and stretch it out uh, and do it in five, which was fine. Then now after my fourth year, I'm told that I only have eight credits left to finish up. Okay. And then I don't really want to pick up a major that doesn't really benefit me and just, you know, skate by and get through. So once I found out about the option of starting grad school and beginning my master's, um, it was a no-brainer to me because it's a new rule with the NCAA mm -hmm. where when you still have eligibility, you can uh, begin to start grad school. So I ended up finishing up my degree in August with an internship, finished nice. up all eight credits with that. Um, and now here I am, about one semester in of grad school, and it's been a little different, but I was a little nervous right away coming into it, uh, looking at the syllabus and everything, like, oh, man. But It um, does take it to a new level. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but I definitely have transitioned well, and I'm, I can handle it now. You just got to manage your time a little better. Right. Well, one of the things, the difference between graduate school and undergraduate is a full, full course load is nine credits as a graduate student. You're thinking, that's it? Mm -hmm. But right. the workload is twice as much per course. Exactly. You have more reading and more writing. And yeah. But but you're ready for that because you already have your bachelor's degree. Right, yeah. Right. So, so you, you're ready to make that leap. Yeah, that set me up pretty nice. There's definitely, you know, some more readings and whatnot, but I think I've gotten used to it a little bit, which is good. Right. Right. So... So at the end of this year, you'll be through one year of a graduate program, but mm -hmm. finishing your eligibility, your five-year rule by the NCAA. So that yeah. sets you up in a really good position. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'll have just one more year of uh, the grad school to finish up next year. That's excellent. Yeah. So in your plan, what, what do you plan on doing with this degree? What's, what's your goal? Uh, well, I'm looking to um, look at some internship possibilities first off, since I'm early in the program. Mm -hmm. um, look at what could happen maybe this upcoming summer and then long term I just want to be around sports in general you know I'm a big sports fan obviously um, right. something around the professional level would be uh, really ideal okay so hopefully down the road at some point I can find something there something in in the management side or yeah like operations yeah you, know, or? yeah you know I'd like to do some management stuff I had a my minor was business management so okay. I'm pretty interested in that right well, it, it's there, there's so many sports teams and sports leagues now. Yeah. So they get hurt and need to be, you know, mm -hmm. rehabbed, or they need to have their sports performance increase. So they go to you. <laughs> uh, but it, but if you're trying to manage, uh, say, uh, the Aberdeen Wings hockey team, mm -hmm. or any any hockey team, or any baseball team, or any professional or semi-pro, you have to manage the people. Uh, there's great, you know, films. Did you ever see Moneyball? I have not. Yeah, it's not. A good one. Oh, it's I a great. Have, you yeah. have to see it. I know. Yeah. I should. It's I talking should. about it's how do you one. get the right people on your team, the, mm -hmm. the right chemistry, so they can actually play together, work together, and perform at a level that they win. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. management. That's, yeah. Uh, that's managing a team. Seems like a great, yeah. great yeah. lifestyle. <laughs> yeah. It's, so there's lots of jobs out there because our culture is so focused on sports, and it's such a big part of our cultures and our communities. So there's lots of jobs. It's, I think a, an idea for an internship is a great thing. Mm -hmm. If you can get with some team and see how, you know, kind of behind the curtain, how it runs, right. and maybe find a niche for yourself, and then that would be the type of jobs that you would apply for. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's, yeah, with that's your management nice. background, that sounds like a real good you know, uh, uh, tandem of yeah, learning. For sure, for sure. Absolutely, absolutely. So, so this year you're... In, in the thrust of the, the, the basketball season, the first league game was last uh, Saturday, and yeah. so uh, you'll be busy for a while. Yeah, I mean, now it's going to be hitting full force here coming in. 
we got Christmas break coming up, but I mean, we'll get like a week off for that. But other than that, we're hopefully going till late March now, early April. Well, that means, and you came from Grand Forks. Now, how yep. far is Grand Forks? Uh, three and a half hours three from here. Okay, so, so that's not bad. kind of in our catch basin, I'd say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. So you just go, go directly north. That's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. But you came, uh, you came from Portland, Oregon? Yep, yep, originally. Is there a story there? Um, not really. <laughs> I mean, I went to, uh, got recruited to play junior college basketball out in Casper, Wyoming. Mm -hmm. So that was my starting my venture out here. Mm -hmm. um, went up to Dickinson, North Dakota and finished out my basketball career up there. And um, just kind of stayed in this area. And like I said, my friend convinced me to come down here and stayed right. out in this area. Yeah. I hate the snow, but it's everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> it's everywhere around here. <laughs> it's just a nuisance. Yeah, yes. It's, it's, it's uh, life threatening. I like the rain <laughs> better. Yeah, much absolutely. better. Absolutely. Well, how would both of you describe Northern? The, the community as a as a community extremely supportive yeah yeah i mean welcoming you yeah. can't really get much better as far as the support you have athletically and just around town everyone's just so nice and i mean I, that's just what i love about here I, I would agree i mean i i haven't even gotten 180 days yet uh, but it's just a really special community not just the campus but the Aberdeen community really embraces Northern mm -hmm. yeah. and accepts students that are moving into town and because they know uh, that the university and the students and everybody that works at the university area is kind of an economic driver of the region, mm -hmm. which is true, but we don't take it for granted because we greatly appreciate the support that the community gives us. So it's a great relationship almost, yeah. a, mm -hmm. kind of the yin and yang. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure which one of us is which, but <laughs> it's great. And it's something we can't take for granted. Mm -hmm. um, and we're trying to build programs like the program that you're in, as well as other graduate programs to help support the region. Right. Yeah, it's, um, it's what we should do, it's, and it's what we do. So the dean mm -hmm. does a great job with that, oh, asking you. the questions of the faculty, what next? What do we mm -hmm. have to do next? Um, are there things that you think might be evolving in, in this program, that, the what next? Well, I think that both of them have talked a little bit about internship possibilities, and I think one of the things that the faculty in that area have really done a nice job of is helping connect students to internship opportunities. Mm -hmm. We've had some students that have done some things with professional sports teams, you talked about that, um, done things with hospitals, uh, fitness centers, just kind of a wide range of things at the management level too. So as we continue to hone those relationships, I think we'll see more and more of our students have those opportunities. Yeah, and it's, mm -hmm. that's what it's all about. Yeah. It's not all in the classroom. You learn a lot outside the classroom. Yep. Mm -hmm. At the graduate level, you, when you go talk to your faculty and maybe you talk to them about their research or the project that they're working on or the curriculum that they're developing, you learn a lot outside the classroom. I always found as a graduate student, outside the classroom is where all the, you kind of connect the dots. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it's, it's very critical to actually just go and talk to your fellow students, mm -hmm. go and talk to your faculty, mm -hmm. and then really figure out how do I use this? It's the application of this, this sophisticated level of knowledge. You know, how does it apply? How do I advance my job and my, in my company that I've started? And I've become this entrepreneur. You know, it's, it's a lot about human service. Mm -hmm. yeah. How do you take care of people? Mm -hmm. How do you make people's lives better? Whether you're helping them with rehab or helping them develop a career or manage, helping them manage their careers. Th those are important ventures, mm -hmm. things that are investments. So you guys will be community leaders for us someday. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. No pressure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but no, it's one of the hallmarks. Of, uh, I hear the, the students that people in the region hire, they're very impressed mm -hmm. with not just the knowledge, but our students as people. Great moral fiber, mm -hmm. great sense of community, want to help, right values. And, and that's a point of pride for us. So you know, whatever you're doing, uh, keep doing that, and, and you'll, great things are in your future. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, today we're also going to talk a little bit about counseling. Right. So we're going to have a, a couple other students come mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. and talk about counseling, and you can maybe talk about the scope of what happens in a counseling program. So okay. this isn't your program, but it's one of the programs that's always uh, uh, facilitated within the building and within mm -hmm. the faculty, within the School of Education. So um, schools of education, in my mind, are always 
growing and developing. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but this program in particular, I think, is really well positioned because of former athletes, current athletes that are studying sport and how to manage sport and, and sport leadership. Um, you're well, well positioned for many successes in the future. So uh, now you finish one in May? May, yep. Oh, that's exciting. Yep, coming okay. up. Coming it's, up quick. It's, it's sneaking up on <laughs> yeah, you. Yes. So, so Yoni, you'll finish in May, and Mac, you mm -hmm. get to be around for a little bit. Yeah, I got some time. But it goes by quickly. Yeah, yeah. very so, quick. So we wish you both every success uh, this, the rest of this semester, because we still have a semester to finish. Right. Mm -hmm. um, you know, after Thanksgiving, it's like a runaway train. Yeah. Yeah. All of, everything's yeah. due at once, and then, yeah. and then we're done. Yeah. Uh, but then have a great holiday, and uh, we know that your great things are in your future. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, okay. thanks a lot. Yeah, thanks for being on the show and the contributions you make in the classroom and outside the classroom as well. They're both equally important. Yeah, no problem. Okay. Thanks for having us. You're welcome. <coughs> So next up, we'll talk with uh, our counseling students, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll be back in a minute. Okay. Welcome back to Inside Northern. We're continuing our show about the School of Education. And today we, we have a continuing guest, uh, Dr. Kelly Duncan, who's the Dean of the School of mm -hmm. Education. And uh, we're welcoming a couple of our students. And we're very pleased to have students here because you know, that's, that's why we're here. So I don't know if you guys figured that out. <laughs> yeah. but, but without you, we cease to exist. Um, so we're, we're very excited that you're here. So it's Ajua. Yeah. And last name is Street. Yeah. The last name's easier to pronounce than the yeah. first name, but it's, it's a very pretty first name. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, very nice. And you're originally from England. Yeah. Well, I was born in Ghana, but I moved to England when I was about 20. So I've, I call England home now. OK. Yeah. OK. I, I sense a slight British accent there. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Very nice. And Stephanie Carrillo. Yeah. Yes. And you're from California. What part of California? Um, Northern Sonoma County. Okay. Which Rhode town? Park, California. Right where Sonoma State University is. Right. My house is right behind it. Okay. So I have a little creek that connects me to it. I've actually been on that campus. Um, I went to Sacramento State University for my oh, undergraduate. Okay. I played a football game at Sonoma State University oh. eons ago long time ago. I go to ride my bike there. Yeah. I got into that school too. It's a pretty yeah. campus. Yeah. Pretty campus. I think we're better. I, I think, yeah. I like the school a lot better. Absolutely. <laughs> Good. Good answer. <laughs> well, so today we're going to talk about the counseling program. And before I have the dean give us kind of a, an overview of what our counseling programs do, I just say that, I, you know, the stressors in society today I think really lend us to continue to f provide counselors. So I think you guys have chosen a really good career, whether you're talking about you know people in school or just people in the workplace, uh, just life in general. You know, life is stressful, so anytime we can help people navigate through the stress and have a more uh, palatable life, a life that's more uh, self-fulfilling. You know, so that career field is the one you've chosen. So that's that's uh, I, it's a great choice, I think. Uh, but I'd like to have the Dean, Dr. Duncan, can you tell us about counseling? Now, you're also a licensed professional counselor. I am, and I was a school counselor for many years as well. Oh, I see. I didn't yeah. realize that. Yeah. See, I learn something new about you every day. <laughs> so so yeah. you've really been in the trenches, so to speak. I have. I've been involved in the counseling profession for about, probably about 25 years. That's going to date me just a little bit. But So I've been in all that time in South Dakota. So I've um, been very, very active in that field for a long time at the national level and certainly at the state level as well. And so you talk about um, navigation was the word that you used and I think that that's really a good way to describe uh, counseling. We all have transitional phases of life that we need some help at times navigating through those and that's really what counselors can bring. And so I, you know, I always want to encourage people to get away from the stereotype that somebody has to have a um, debilitating problem in order to right. seek counseling. That isn't the case. We all have times that we can maybe just use somebody to help us kind of think through and, and talk through a situation that we're trying to deal with. Kind of a professional sounding board. Yes. Say, yeah. Am I thinking about this correctly? Mm -hmm. Can you help me? Yeah. Just a, an objective person mm -hmm. who really isn't in your relationship or in the right. situation but can help you mm -hmm. think your way through it. Right. Yeah, it's a great career. I've had lots of colleagues that are in counseling. Mm -hmm in my lifetime and, uh, and 
and the dean and the provost of, in mm -hmm. universities were the counseling programs were very robust mm -hmm. and the students working in the community doing their hours was also very impactful to places like schools and mm -hmm. counseling centers because there's there's always a shortage mm -hmm. for counselors so right. uh, now have the two of you done any clinical hours yet um, I actually am doing my practicum right now so okay I've just completed all my hours, so it was pretty nice. Okay. It was interesting. I very much enjoyed it. Wasn't expecting to work with people like that, but it was it was amazing working with defiant children from ages two to seven to even high school mm -hmm. students that get bullied. Mm -hmm. It was interesting. And you were working with was the Department of Corrections? Um, I am. Currently, right now, at the Dakota Counseling Group, it's a little private practice, okay. and then my internship should be done at the Department of Corrections, which, hopefully. Right, which will be an interesting yeah. environment. Yes. Yeah, it's a lot of stress. Right. It, right. It, we'll see. <laughs> well, well, but uh, I've, when I lived in Los Angeles, I got to interact with students that came from all different perspectives. Yeah. And, and some just by where they live, they're under duress. Yeah, and that's one of the main reasons why I chose this career. I did live a few years in Los Angeles oh, when I was okay. younger. Um, my parents were immigrants into this country. Okay. So in our culture, this profession is a very, look, it's frowned upon, just like crazy people go. You know, everybody has that biased opinion about uh, it. Mm -hmm. So even my dad at this point still doesn't believe in it. I was like, well, you know, it's something I would like to get out there and hopefully show immigrants that, you know, it's, right. the bias is not true. Right. Well, yeah, there's, there's stigmas. Yeah. And, you know, if you have to ask somebody, you must not be strong enough to deal with it. Mm -hmm. No. You just need somebody to help you sort yeah. things through. Yeah, and actually asking for help is a sign of strength. That, that's yeah. something that I say yeah. from a management mm -hmm. perspective. Yeah. Just ask for help. I would prefer you ask for help mm -hmm. than trying to make it up. And then we have a bigger problem, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know. So yeah. you can kind of avoid future problems or not stacking them on top mm -hmm. of each other by just kind of sorting through the issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Now, yeah. Stephanie, you came here originally because of sports, right? I transferred yeah. here my junior year. I was lucky enough to get recruited by Coach Kem. I, l I came on a visit. I loved how small the school was. Now you get to interact with your professors is one of the right. main things why I chose this school. And I had a blast playing soccer, uh, wonderful teammates, uh, definitely helped me a lot through school and then decided to stay here and pursue a graduate degree. Right, that's yeah. great. So we still get you for four years. Yes, two so yeah, undergrad, two that's why two I said it, was, yeah, it wasn't bad, two, two, four. Yeah. I get to come in with the freshman class and go out with them as well. Absolutely, mm -hmm. So, but, yeah. but you leave with a master's. Yes, instead yeah. of a, yeah, <laughs> I leave with a master's and an undergrad, a yeah. bachelor's, so. Uh, well, that's excellent, so your sports helped you in life by, you know, helping you get through college. It Definitely. gave you goals. Yes. And then you decide, well, I think I'll stay there. I like that. Yeah. That's yeah. a good endorsement. Yeah. I like the professors, the education here. Very one-on-one. -on -one. Instead of maybe California schools, you're just a number. And here, we're individuals, and we take, our opinions are taken into account, which right. is awesome. Well, I, I would agree with that assessment, you know, having worked here for a while. Uh, that's one of the things that attracted me was the community and a sense of community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's not something we should take for granted. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. So, uh, Adjoy, you've you've had an interesting route already. You told us you came from Ghana, then you went to the, to the UK, yeah. and then. But how did you get here? Uh, there has to be a story there. Yeah, <laughs> there is a story. All right. <laughs> <laughs> how long have you got? Well, um, I. I'm really interested in different cultures, experiencing different cultures, mm -hmm. and uh, I am a parent as well. So I wanted, a, a, I wanted to experience a different culture, okay. as well as learning at the same time. Um, so I started exploring different, different universities, and because I've got a son, it's easier for him to transition to somewhere where they speak English, so an English-speaking country. Okay. And I, that I was just Googling, and I put Aberdeen in, because I thought that in Scotland, um, again, that is another country even those part, you know, people uh -huh. assume that it's not, it's in the United Kingdom. Um, and then another Aberdeen came up. Oh, so you were looking oh. at Scotland and yeah. South Dakota showed up. Oh. Yeah. And it was like, what? 
you know, there is an Aberdeen in the United States, so I started looking into it. And last year we came visiting, we came to campus, and then I thought, oh, it feels like home already. You know, mm -hmm. it's quite small. It doesn't feel, right. you know, overpowering. Then I went, to, I went to the graduate office to inquire about, you know, what master's programs they have and, and things. And I had already thought about doing a counseling program, but in England it's over three years. Uh -huh. and it's a lot more expensive so when i found out your fees i was really really excited That's um good. and also you know the were the staff were very very helpful and then they got me in touch with um dr k and you know already you know she made me feel really welcome and she told me about the opportunities that they've got and in the process um i applied for a graduate assistantship program and i you know got accepted onto the disability department so that is where I am as well at the moment and that also brought down the fees that I had to pay so it was a, a no-brainer almost like it was meant to be mm -hmm. you know yeah. that you know walking around campus it felt like I've been here for years and that's great I hadn't so that's yeah. my story so so just by googling Aberdeen we yeah. should we should thank Google Yes. Yeah. <laughs> or whichever search engine you're using. Yeah, you can't well, that's you know, because there's many of them. Yeah. <laughs> but that that's great. I mean it's 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 um, a little bit of serendipity mm -hmm. that got you here. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. Well we're glad that you're pleased with being here. I, I would agree with your assessment. It's a it's a safe, welcoming mm -hmm. community. And you, you said you you have a son, which uh, you know, it's a great place to raise kids. Mm -hmm. um, great schools and a uh, lot of activities for youth in this town yeah, which, which is very important. Yeah, I'm struggling to keep up with that right now. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah, you need an a, a electronic calendar just to keep up with his schedule, yeah. much less yours. <laughs> I, I hear that a lot from parents. Yeah, absolutely. So the, the, the profession of counseling, so can we just kind of pull back and mm -hmm. say well, if if someone is interested in counseling, what are the different variations within the program itself? Okay, we have two different tracks in our counseling program. We have clinical mental health, and that's the track that Stephanie is in, and then we have school counseling. Okay. And so, um, you know, depending on what what age group people might want to work with and what kind of a work setting they're looking for, that's usually what helps them make that decision. And so uh, we've got about probably equal number of students in both of those programs. Okay, okay so the school mm -hmm. counseling, so if I became a school counselor, mm -hmm. I could work at an elementary, middle school, high school? Any place at the K-12 level, probably. Okay. Um, and, and in, of course, in rural South Dakota, you might have everybody K through 12 because you're the only school counselor and, and oftentimes oh. even the only mental health professional in your small community. Okay, mm -hmm. so you become the mental health expert. Yes, you do, yeah. yeah. Well, that's that's a yeah. big job then. It is. Yeah, but but nowadays, I mean, you hear about things like bullying. Mm -hmm. I think there was always bullying, but maybe it's gone to a new level. And but it's mm -hmm. getting students to understand, a, it's not appropriate, and then if students feel it or perceive it or experience it, how do they manage that mm -hmm. so it doesn't become a debilitation? So they stop going to school right. or stop paying attention in school, and then mm -hmm. bad things happen like they don't finish school right. so so mm -hmm. you know school counseling is pretty critical mm -hmm. yeah and then you have families in distress illness economic issues and mm -hmm. you know and the the children feel it mm -hmm. parents may not talk about it but you've yeah. in your years of being a school yeah. counselor they feel it they, they perceive do. it they know something's not right mm -hmm. yeah so having a school right. counselor is really critical yeah schools need to be a safe place for kids to come right. to they right. need to feel um, welcomed and, and ready for the day and if they're dealing with issues at home any issues outside of school or even inside school that detract from learning we know yeah. that's not going to be helpful right so how to, how to make school um, I always call schools learning communities mm -hmm. because it is a community and even if you're the teacher or the professor you're learning from the students about mm -hmm. how they're seeing the material and how they're interacting so everyone's learning Mm -hmm. But how do you make it a safe place, to mm -hmm. your point, yeah. and, a, and a safe space to mm -hmm. share and kind of express your mm -hmm. ideas and your thoughts? Right. That happens when people feel psychologically safe mm -hmm. and secure. Mm -hmm. So it's really pretty critical. Yeah. So you got a lot of work ahead of you. Yeah, it will be interesting to go out and experience what it's like in, in the schools over here. 
because it, you know the communities are really tight, tightly knit. So mm -hmm. everybody seems to know everybody, mm -hmm. and they tend to get on quite well. But that also has its own challenges. Right. You know where where you know you know a family and uh, the child is being bullied, and you go to church with that family. You know, and you're the counselor. How do you address mm -hmm. that? How do you separate yourself from you know uh, the school counsel counseling relationship, and how do you you know the church relationship that you've got with this family? But I, I guess that is something that I'll deal with when when, <laughs> when it happens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I find that that people that go into professions such as counseling, they have a real sense of passion to help. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. if that's your whole premise, yeah. you'll be fine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that would be my prediction. Yes. Yeah, because you're just there to help. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You don't always have to have the answers. Yeah. You're just yeah. there to help people sort through. Mm -hmm. You know, exactly. what are the problems and what are the True. potential mm -hmm. solutions? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, so if we <coughs> shift gears, mental health counseling, yes. yeah, how would we describe that profession? That's probably, it, it's probably easier for people to kind of think about school counseling and, and working K-12, but mental health counseling really opens up. Stephanie will have really a whole gamut of areas. She could go into a medical setting, a hospital setting, she could go mm -hmm. into a, a residential setting, she could work with the court system as she's going to do during her internship, mm -hmm. she could maybe have a practice of her own someday or go into a practice setting. She did a practicum in a, that was with a practice yeah. here in, in Aberdeen. So there are really a lot of avenues for people to pursue with a clinical mental health degree. Um, so it's really wide open and just you're going to have just tons of opportunities. So yeah. the harder thing will be maybe honing in on what it is you want to do and your internship will hopefully tell you too if that's the, the direction you want to go, if that's the population you want to work with. Yeah, so far in my practicum I've got to work from, like I said, little kids from two-year-olds all the way up to adults from divorce family so it's 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 a range of people you get to work with mm -hmm. and the things you learn <coughs> from those people is is just amazing mm -hmm. and you learn about yourself you become more aware of your own beliefs and values and and you just learn more about the world from hearing it in a different perspective because everyone has their own perspective mm -hmm. that's kind of why I love this profession is I get to listen to all these other perspectives and say wow I would have never thought of it that way but yeah. You become really aware of your own beliefs and values. <laughs> it's 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 mm -hmm. amazing. Well, you know, the diversity is, is is multiple things, and one of them is perspectives yeah. and values, and and how they see the world. And so you under taking being e empathetic, and that sense of empathy then allows you to understand where they're coming from, and then maybe help them sort and figure out what's the potential solutions to whatever issue is um, challenging them. Yeah, yeah, it's, we're there as a tool for them to use is, right. is how I look at it. Right. Now, now, your next plan, so you finish your master's in? I am applying to a couple doctorate programs, so okay. I would love to get a doctorate in um, clinical psychology or counseling psychology. And I would love to do individual therapies back in Mexico, mm. do some, okay. some work up there, and possibly maybe settle down and work at a state mental hospital. Okay. Yeah. So, so a doctorate. Yeah. So we'll have to call you doctor soon. <laughs> Hopefully. Okay. Let's wait until the acceptance letter is <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's a, uh, it's a it's stressful a process. process. It yeah. is. You um, need to talk to somebody about I know. That. I think so. <laughs> I think I need to go talk to one of the counselors here. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. It, it, it's stressful, but I'm sure you'll, you'll, you'll rise to the challenge. Yeah, it's a great kind of stress, I think. Now that I don't play sports, I don't have much things to motivate me, and stress is one of those. It kind of gets me going for some okay. reason. You know, i got to outrun the stress. Yeah. Okay. That's it. I, absolutely. Uh, sports is a great framework to, to challenge yourself, set goals. And yeah. So your goal is to get into a doctoral program. Great. Let's be positive thinkers. You're in. Um, <laughs> and, then, and then how do you get through that program? You know, it, it's step by step by mm -hmm. step, and suddenly you'll be getting, you know, a, a, a funny hat on your head, yeah. and they put a hood over you and call you doctor. Right. It was only five years ago when I graduated high school in 11, 2011. That, yeah. And I'm already here. I was just like, wow, time just went by. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, and that's what happens. It flies. Oh, yeah. 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 So that's a great goal. And, and you may decide to do the same or not. It's, mm -hmm. it's an option. Yeah. Well, hopefully the long-term long plan is um, to do my PhD as well. But 
not quite sure in what area. Right. But in the short term, I have a charity that I run in Ghana. Okay. That is uh, providing training for practitioners working with vulnerable children in Ghana. And that's one of the main reasons why I went on to a counseling program. I want to uh, disseminate or share what I've learned on the, on the program with uh, the teachers that are working with um, the children out there because I find that most of them need counseling. But right. there's only one of me and I can't, you know, I can't counsel everybody. So hopefully if I'm a qualified counselor and I train the other practitioners, hopefully I'll be able to reach out to a lot mm -hmm. more children than I would do if I just, you know, give counseling, one-to-one -one counseling to the children and myself. So that's right. my short-term plan, but in the long term, I'd want to own a floppy hat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the funny hat, it's, it's a great yeah. day yeah. when you get to lay yeah. your foot on you and a funny hat. Mm -hmm. um, but that's great. So you, you have uh, a kind of a non-profit that you're, yeah. you're facilitating already yeah. to, in support of yeah. children and families. Yes. Well, that's exceptional. Yeah. That's, very, that's very Thank admirable. You. We should be proud of that. Yeah, and may we are. maybe one day you guys would come and visit. Well, I like. think we could. Yeah, that sounds pretty exciting. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I think your model's really well well spoken because you can't have thirty counselors on staff, but if you can have people that understand, they can help people to a certain degree, and then maybe you're the one that has to come and take over the case. Yes. Yeah. But if it's just a simple, mild issue of they're afraid because they have to take a test. Yeah. That could be yeah. just an anomaly, yeah. Yeah. but if it becomes some sort of real problem where they, they, they won't get out of bed the day they have a yeah. test, yeah. then they need the professional yeah. to come in and work yeah. through the situation. Yeah. yeah, that's great. That sounds exceptional. Thank you. Well, the whole profession of counseling, some people might ask, why is counseling as a degree program in a, a school of education? Has anybody ever asked you that? I don't know that they have, so you asked me a new question, but yeah. pretty typically um, that's been the tradition. It's because the, the profession of counseling grew out of some work in the early 1900s that happened in a school where somebody noticed, he was a high school English teacher who thought students had some needs that weren't being addressed and so um, started to kind of work in that area and so counseling's roots really come from school counseling and then later developed into clinical mental health and some of those other areas as well w with more advent of some things um, in the, about the right. 1930s. Yeah, so there, it's an evolution. Yes. Yeah. And, and that makes sense mm -hmm. uh, because the schools are kind of an intact unit. Mm -hmm. There's counselors, there's some sort of medical professional because they do fall and hurt themselves, speaking from experience. You know. yeah. um, and then the teachers are there to make sure that there's learning and the principal and the staff is there to make sure the facilities are all mm -hmm. appropriate and well maintained. And yeah. So it really takes a, a kind of a village to run a school. Right and make sure that it's running appropriately and make sure that the students feel like they're supported and, and uh, it's a positive experience. But yeah, the counseling profession is great, so we're, we're very proud of your work and we're thankful for both of you choosing uh, A, to stay at Northern, and, and B, to come to Northern, to Aberdeen as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a great story. We're gonna have to look into that with the Chamber of Commerce. Maybe yeah. we have to start to push Aberdeen out there so people yeah. come to visit Aberdeen, South Dakota instead of Scotland. I think, yeah. I think the weather yeah. here would be better than Aberdeen, Scotland. <laughs> yeah. so, yeah. It's quite cold in Scotland too, and yeah. they have a lot of snow as yes. well. So quite lo a lot of similarities. But yeah. I think it's people are friendly here, and you know everybody wants to talk to you and things. So uh -huh. maybe we need to pick uh, Aberdeen, Scotland as our sister city. Yeah. And I question if some of us have to start wearing a kilt sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> you wear the first one, President <coughs> Downs. <laughs> it won't be in February, I know that, <laughs> because it's a little bit chilly. Yes, yes. yes. But uh, no, those are, those are great stories. So yes. you both got here from different means, mm -hmm. but you came here and you're real pleased with the program? Great. I, I, I am. I am really pleased and it's really, you know, pushing some buttons. There, are, I'm learning things about myself that I probably didn't realize that, you know, I had those views, especially in the multicultural, um, multicultural course that I'm doing at the moment. I'm thinking, you know, when I first started, I thought, multicultural, how complex can this get? And I go to class, some days I walk out of class and I'm thinking, whew, you know, I'm glad the section is over because you have all these mixed emotions and things that you didn't know when the, you know, the professor is really good at 
helping you to think critically mm -hmm. and you know highlighting areas you know ser um, stereotypical views that you probably didn't realize that you had those views and perceptions about people so it's doing great things in a, a nice way but it, it, you, by studying counseling and going through the role play and all the activities you do, as well as you know engaging in uh, practicums and internships, it, it is very introspective. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you yes. do learn about yourself. In order to be able to not maybe make a biased comment towards an individual, right. you kind of have to be aware of your own mm -hmm. biases. Let's say you get someone from a different religion or culture, you know, right. you're aware that this is my belief, maybe. Be aware of that, take it in, and focus on their their right. beliefs. So not, not interject your biases right. in the conversation. Yeah. It, it's too. really difficult, and there have been discussions, you know, in classes that are just like, <laughs> good thing class is over. My yeah. head is about like. Yeah. It's ready to explode. Yeah, <laughs> it, yeah. I mean, you, we learn so much, uh, you know, and then you have different people from different areas, and it's just amazing mm -hmm. what you learn about yourself and them. Well, I'm sure you experience, you've seen all sides of this, mm -hmm. uh, having gone through all levels of education and licensure mm -hmm. f as a counselor and then teaching in these programs. Right. It's, it's quite a transformation for the students to, be, to learn about counseling and then do counseling and then be ready to be a, a, a licensed professional counselor. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty neat process. It's wonderful to watch that growth that students go through when they're in a counseling program. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, it's it's a it's a big part of our our school of education, so the Millicent School. As you said at the beginning of the show, uh, it's a very multifaceted school. Mm -hmm. We're fortunate that it was supported, and uh, we have an endowment from the Atkins uh, Trust. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a great opportunity to help us grow the the school even more. Mm -hmm. uh, the graduate programs are a growth opportunity for us, because for people in education or counseling to advance their careers credentials are needed mm -hmm. right. so that's that's a growth venture for us that we mm -hmm. can predict in the future mm -hmm. uh, either the potential for new programs or programs that exist would be growing mm -hmm. yeah, so as, uh, as the faculty are all engaged in that process I've got marvelous faculty and they are always open to new ideas right and we are lucky at, at Northern the faculty are just great people yeah they are and they're here for the right reasons they're here to help develop students mm -hmm. uh, I'm very impressed with our faculty mm -hmm. And it really shows in their teaching as well, their commitment and, you know, they have practical experiences that they bring to the teaching, which makes a whole lot of difference. It does. It does. If they can say, well, let me tell you about a case. And yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow, I never thought of that. Yeah. And then, oh, I never thought of that. Yeah. That's what the graduate level is wonderful. Uh, the seminar experience of not just reading about a theory, but then understanding how the theory applies and then talking about a case. Yeah maybe a case that you saw in your practicum or your internship where you say well I have an example yeah it's yeah, yeah. it's that's the invaluable part of it yeah. it's really there's the theory and then there's the praxis that mm -hmm. practice that, that mm -hmm. really uh, makes it a, a perfect program almost mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah it's exciting it is. well we're excited that that you have joined us and that you are excited about being here and you're really having a great experience uh, so your, char your charge is to go out and tell more people about our programs. Uh, this program is one of the things that we'll do is we'll constantly showcase each one of the schools. Mm -hmm. We talk about different projects that Northern is doing because um, Northern is a gem out here on the, on the Great Plains. Uh -huh. yeah. And we have to shine a brighter light on Northern so people see the greatness that exists here yeah. in, in the campus as Northern State as well as Aberdeen in this region of the state. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's a great place to be. Yes, it is. Yeah. Any uh, closing comments about the school? Anything that you'd like to add? I don't want to leave uh, anything out. Well, you know, just one thing I would say, one of, one of the things that we've really appreciated is our students do a lot of community service and are very mm -hmm. active in the community from the, from the undergraduate through the graduate level. And again, that speaks to the Aberdeen community's willingness to involve students in, in different activities. And so our students really have a lot of opportunity here in town, and we're very thankful for the relationships that we have here in town with, with different groups, whether it be hospitals, schools, uh, practice centers in town. Uh, we just are very, very fortunate. Right. And, and our students, whether they're education students or counseling students, they mm -hmm. also work at places like the Boys and Girls right. Club. Right. Mm -hmm. 
a phenomenal place that really keeps young people focused mm -hmm. and doing positive things after school. Mm -hmm. And then parents come pick them up and they go and uh, they're the custody of the parents, but it's a great segue and mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a great partner in the community. Right. I know a lot of our students uh, mm -hmm. work at the Boys and Girls Club. Just keeping students doing things that are good, uh -huh. being positive, and uh, being being prepared for that day and doing their homework. They don't mm -hmm. get to play until they do their homework. Right. I mean, these <laughs> are just good. Yeah. The basic yeah. things, yeah. basic premises. Yeah. Make sure you get right. your work done. Yeah. It's a good good practice. Yeah. So we're engaged in all those activities and partners in the community. Mm -hmm. um, I'm thankful, and I've always been affiliated with an institution that has a strong uh, school of education. It's one of the things that drew me to Northern. Mm -hmm. It's a tradition, mm -hmm. uh, even in my family, to be affiliated with a normal school. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I told you that story. Mm -hmm. My grandfather actually uh, got his teaching certification uh, at what used to be called Kansas State Normal, uh -huh. which is now Emporia State University. Right. And Where you worked at one point in time. In a previous yes. life, I was the Dean of yeah. Graduate Studies at that yes. school. My office was in the same building where oh. he actually took classes. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Another serendipity. <laughs> yeah, about 90 years after uh -huh. the fact of him being a student. Mm -hmm. but, but it's a great tradition, and, and education and counseling mm -hmm. are benchmarks and strengths that help mm -hmm. build and sustain communities. Mm -hmm. So we're very thankful for everything that is done in the School of Education. In particular, today we talked about sports performance and leadership a real growing area mm -hmm. and a, a great area for students to study and, and have the viability to get jobs. And today also talking about counseling, which is a great career. Yeah. So we're happy that you're happy. And I thank the dean uh, for welcome. all the good work that you do in thank concert you. with your faculty. I've got the best job in the world. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. It is. Yeah. Every day's a mystery, yeah. Yeah. but you make it work yeah. and come up with solutions and great things uh -huh. happen. That's right. So we're f real excited. Uh, we'll, we'll be glad to have you and others back to talk about other things in the future in the School okay. of Education. I've got a school full of wonderful students I can bring, so Absolutely. You have us anytime. Sounds great. Okay. So in the meantime, I wish you both continued success. There's, there's finals coming up and papers, all oh, those yeah. things. <laughs> They'll all get done. <laughs> it doesn't seem like it now because there's two to three weeks left. And right. And that last lot. week, it'll all get done. <laughs> it always gets done. Sometimes yes, there's does. less sleep than desired, but it all gets done. Right. But thank you for your contribution, not just to the program, but to our community. Thank you for uh, having it's, us. It's thank you impact. for having us. Yeah. So I wish you, everyone, a great holiday. And uh, with that, again, this is Dr. Downs w with Dr. Duncan and our students talking about counseling. And earlier we talked about sports performance and leadership, great programs that are hallmarks in our School of Education. Right. And if you have any conversations or questions about the School mm -hmm. of Education, feel free to contact Dr. Duncan. We'd be glad to yeah. have you come visit campus, mm -hmm. uh, learn more about our programs, and see how you might become involved as well. That'd be great. So with that, uh, happy holidays. And as we always say at the end of every show, go Wolves. Go Wolves. Right. <laughs> go Wolves.